Good morning and welcome to the June 14th City of Eugene Planning Commission. Today we are here to final finalize the deliberations on the hearings officials approval of the Capitol Hill PUD. I'm John Borowski. I'm the chair of the Planning Commission. We'll go around for the record. Kristen Taylor. John Jaworski. Bill Randall. Stephen Baker. Staff. Warren Summers. Gabe Flock. Nick Joyello. Alyssa Hansen. All right, thank you. Um, we received a preliminary findings report that was put together by staff yesterday evening. Um, I've had a chance to look at it. Has the rest of the commission had a chance to look at it? All right, with that, then I will let staff uh, explain what they've done, and we'll probably just step through these changes, the highlighted ones, one by one, and see if there's any issues that any of the commission has with them. First of all, I know say thank you to staff. Um, this was a Herculean effort. Um, so thank you. I think you did a great job. So I appreciate it. So I only had, I think only one. Let me double check. So um, where my question, uh, do you want to go in order or do you want me to? I, think we're gonna... I was going to let staff kind of talk us oh, through it. Oh, sorry about that. I thought we were just jumping in. Yeah. Okay, go for it. All right. So right. So we prepared a draft final order for you to consider and uh, put that out on email last night. Um, we uh, also have the document available so that we can make changes today on the fly. Hopefully, you, it, it, since everybody's had a chance to read it, if there are specific edits, um, we'll be able to accomplish that during the meeting if need be. Um, we've provided some highlighting throughout the document to really focus your attention on the areas that um, we had clear direction from the commission on to either um, add text or modify the hearings officials decision to add conditions of approval uh, and so we believe um, that it uh, um, reflects the direction you've given on each of those key issues um, that said I mean it is a 44 page document uh, it addresses all of the appeal issues thoroughly uh, we believe and so if there are other areas uh, certainly your discussion and decision um, is not limited to those highlighted areas but we thought we might just walk through each uh, of the uh, yellow highlighted areas first um, in order and just make sure that it reflects um, the, uh, the will of the, <coughs> the body thank you and the, yeah and that would be good for the people who are watching or yeah. you know other people who haven't seen the document so the first one is uh, page five of the document. Uh, and that, this one is about a very simple one to change a line on page 14 of the hearings official decision. Uh, and you can see the sentence there is the planning staff have identified the three following policies within the Metro Plan residential land use and housing element as and you directed us to remove approval criteria for and then replace it with relevant to approval of the proposed PUD and then the sentence continues on. And I'll just add, I appreciate Commissioner Taylor's um, uh, sharp eyes and noticing that, that reference in the hearings official's decision um, because uh, as staff understand is they're not mandatory approval criteria, they're really more directives to the city with regard to legislative matters, but we still um, are uh, regularly in the practice of considering any relevant policies and mm -hmm. um, in the event of an appeal, a further appeal, uh, this pr more precise language is helpful, we believe. So thank right. you. Yeah. All right. Anybody have any problems with this one? No. All right. The next one is um, page nine. I think it's there. There's a little bit of lag on this for some reason. Still acting up. <laughs> Can't even get. Just use the down arrow to Nick. <sighs> Just maybe there it is. Yeah, it just does line by line. Okay, there. Oh, right there. <sighs> page up and page down might be most cool. Yeah. I'll do that next. Just to start off the discussion, yeah. uh, <laughs> keep going. You've you've seen the. Uh, 
revised condition of approval. Uh, at, you saw that at the last meeting, and I think we got an informal uh, approval of the, <coughs> the revisions. We provided some lead-in language as well to help couch it in the correct context within the criteria uh, leading up to the change. Uh, and so hopefully, and there have been no further changes that I know of to the, the language of the condition itself. Hopefully it reflects the direction we got. I think there was just a couple of spelling mm. error. I think there was the difference between analysis and analyses. Oh, yeah. We made those kind of changes mm -hmm. from the last time you saw this uh, proposed change. Is there any, any concern? Okay, so. An extra the, yeah. Take the thought out. Well, that would be. Wait a second. <laughs> what did we change? Yeah. It's been the a, South yeah. Hill studies, the develop. It should be the South Hill study development, development standards. standards. Yeah. Ah, thank, right. thank you. Thank you. That does it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. If you find typos, mm -hmm. please point them out. <laughs> a lot of words At in this here. point, that's the time to point out typos as well, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 All of it. So. Next We're going to go to 11, actually. Um, it's, it, there's one piece that's not highlighted. It should have yeah, been. I and think so that's the one I was looking go. for right the there. That is the one. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a... Gonna... So this relates to the clarification regarding um, um, preservation areas that, that border uh, well, the, the northeast boundary and the confusion that seemed to be created by reference to that in the hearing special's decision. So we made the simplest possible change we could to hopefully clarify it, um, simply changing the reference along the northeast boundary to near the northeast corner of the subject property. Um, we believe that uh, that boundary is, is clearly shown on the applicant site plan with dimensions and the, the text leading up to it and the staff comments explains that more precisely. So hopefully that's adequate. Okay, so moving on to the next one, page 20, <laughs> and it's not responding. I'm just going to grab and slide right there. There we go. Slide. And, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so this reflects the uh, direction to modify condition of approval number eight. Um, and this um, stems from the discussion we had regarding the applicant's proposed fence along the um, eastern boundary of the site and actually including portions of the south and uh, north boundaries as well. So we added some clarifying language with regard to that. Uh, we eliminated, <coughs> eliminated the reference to structures that require a building permit, so it will encompass all structures within the preservation areas. Uh, and then we added an exception for the applicant's proposed fence uh, and uh, requirement for arborist review and, and uh, supervision of the installations. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just curious, because I, I don't think this is this I'm hoping it's just a typo that it doesn't start a discussion. Mm. But in exception two, the applicant's proposed six foot tall agricultural pass through fence shall be allowed along the entire southern. Should eastern be western and northern boundaries along track A? Well, the eastern boundary would be the closest property boundary that abuts the ribbon and trail. Right. Right. So I thought what we were talking about was that track A would stay open. To Henry, to the Ribbon right Trail. The my then, my understanding is that there was interest on the a part of at least well maybe one or two commissioners to explore that, but that the commission ultimately decided that it should be located on or near the eastern boundary. Do you have, so go ahead and point it out. Well, I think in the last deliberations we were there was discussion about the, the applicant had shown a call out. Actually. If you could read it, it's right here, where they called out here and here. 
the boundary fence and also a call out here for it. And so this is what we're calling the south boundary. This would be the east boundary. We're talking the entire property, even though we call this track there. And then a little portion here, and then we put in a little thing about this preservation area of lot five. But there was discussion about someone wanted to mm -hmm. know about moving it up to here. So that was Commissioner Baker. Yeah. Okay, great. Is this supposed to be on the western side as well? Because this says northern boundary. So this is north. Oh, right. I get to, okay. Thank yeah. you. It's Thank you for that. The orientation of the map makes it uh, yeah, <coughs> kind of difficult. Yeah, every time. Okay. Hendricks North. Thank Hendricks you. North. I know that. All right. Okay. So any other wording changes? Uh, does it, the condition make sense as written? Yes. As long as the map's the right direction. Sure, it's good. I, I, I wasn't actually, I guess, in that conversation it's clear that we... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Move on to the page 24. So this section is um, uh, work that we've done since the last meeting in our um, discussion about the uh, condition of approval related to street improvements adjacent to lots 18 and 19. Uh, including uh, uh, sidewalks and 21 foot of, of, of paving width. Um, we have provided reference to materials in the record and some rationale that leads to it. Uh, as, as far as justifying it, we've also provided some draft uh, uh, constitutional findings for the required improvement, uh, and um, City Attorney's Office has um, assisted with that to help make sure that it's a defensible exaction. And so, so I'll leave it at that and see if there's any questions or discussion. Uh, on page 25, third paragraph, uh, sorry, third paragraph under constitutional findings for required improvement, mm -hmm. where it says 20, 21 feet, it says 21 feet and width. I think you just want, you've been using and throughout, so I think the width is extra. Either the and or the width is extra. The width right before five foot. Curb. Sorry, yeah, 20. So the requirements to improve the portion of Capitol Drive shifting da, 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 with a paved width of at least 21 feet and width. So you either want and or width, I think. I don't think you want and width. At least- so You're suggesting perhaps I, taking I don't out know. the word and? Or with, because yeah. you've out, actually used and throughout, and all of a sudden, yeah. Because with would, could, that would take out with. Confusing. Yeah. 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 Um, there may be multiple references. There are, but you're consistent throughout with just and. That's the only one. That's the only one with the extra width. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So you you use and many times. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So, is it helpful? And that's where I went back and forth because to me it's very clear. Does it ever need to see a total of 26 feet? Because you basically have 21 feet of paving. So just so there's clear that you're having 21 feet of paving plus this sidewalk at five feet, right? So you're meaning 26 feet. You're not meaning 21 feet, my, including the sidewalk. I'm trying to distinguish the paving for the yeah. travel lane exactly. versus the, the the sidewalk width. Great. Um, and if there's any question there, we we uh, in terms of the available right of way width, it's I believe it's 50 feet wide. And, yep. And the current roadway is actually shifted uh, to the to the west. Um, yeah. So there's substantial room, albeit a steep slope. There, uh, there is more than enough at a, uh, a right of way width. I think almost as much as 20 feet um, yeah. to, to make those improvements that's unimproved now. So plenty of room. Yeah, it, it's not about that. It's more that there's really clear understanding. It says a width of at least. So maybe a, at least a minimum of 20 feet, 26 feet of right away. I don't know if it's needed. Commissioner Taylor, I take your point. I think I'll explain what we were trying to do. And Great. If that um, answers your concern or addresses your concern. So um, I think the key word for me in reading through the condition is the paved width of at least 21 feet. Yeah. And so that, that to me denotes the travel lane and then an additional five foot Perfect. sidewalk. 
I just wanted to make sure. I, I think it's clear. I also know that it, the code often will split up. They'll do a total plus the divisions of what the parts and pieces are within that right away. So I just want, if, if you feel like it's clear, I read it, I thought it was clear, but if there's any suggestion, then you could just see. My, my one thought about um, limiting the total width to 26 feet is that my understanding from planning commission's discussion was that we you, know, you knew you wanted the five foot sidewalks because that is the same requirement as higher up a capital drive. Right. Um, and that you wanted a traveling width of at least 21 feet. Sure. But if the design was such that the tra it made sense for the traveling width to actually be a little bit wider, right. that yeah. wouldn't be a problem for the planning commission. So I didn't want to limit. Sure. And I'm not suggesting limiting it. So just so you hear me, it would be a minimum. Oh, I see. A minimum. So it would do the same thing. It's just repeating it with a total dimension. That's it. And if you don't think it's needed, don't worry about it. I don't need to bring it up. I don't think it's needed. OK, Usually. perfect. So Gabe brought up a point that wasn't brought up when we were discussing this, hmm. and the fact that, that it's a steep hillside. I guess the question I would have is, one, is that an area that's a above 901 feet? And, and then I guess it's not. OK, well, then that was one of my questions, because and so you, it sounds like it might have more grading and impact on tree. So we kind of didn't really talk about that when we. Well, to be clear, it's all within existing right of way, which is okay. unzoned yeah. and okay. is regulated by the city's public improvement okay. design standards manual. It'll yeah. be reviewed thoroughly. We, you know, as part of the privately engineered public Im improvement permitting process, yeah. and so. Um, that would be the point at which specific designing construction details get get hammered out okay and then the other thing is um, I read through the constitutional findings do you feel that these are adequate to be defensible I do I mean okay. we did our best um, uh, to draft what we believe are defensible findings yeah okay any other discussion all right uh, let's see. <coughs> Going down to page 34, I think, right? 33. Um, so this item is um, the additional condition of approval related to maximum lot coverage for all lots <coughs> uh, being 50%. We added the... the um, clarification that square footage of any preservation area shall be excluded in the calculation of lot coverage. And so rather than identifying individual lot numbers, this, this was a simple way to capture any lot that may have a preservation area to make sure it's not included in, in the lot coverage. Uh, I don't know how specific one has to be. When I read that, and I'm sure I probably read it wrong, I, th I thought maybe you should add of any preservation area either within each lot shall be excluded because I, I don't want right. it to be defined as right I got a little yeah, too, yeah. so I, I was thinking that we're talking about the preservation area within each lot shall be excluded for that lots coverage that, that's a good point and, and I, um, I I do understand that there was some confusion about the difference between the common area preservation areas and the uh, individual preservation areas on each lot however they all are considered preservation areas and so we, we felt like this this was a simple all-encompassing way to to capture those okay i just well it, it includes both based on this language commissioner randall and in my notes i had this as number 21 rather than 22. did we have a 21 we added a new condition of approval right. for, we the, uh, for the street, street improvement. The street right. So we renumbered it okay. and then added these also to and the very sure end of the document. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Imagination. All right. Next page. So this one relates to um, a correction. Uh, modification of the hearing official's reference to the easement widths. Uh, I believe she had referred to both of them being 20 feet wide with 12 foot uh, paving surfaces. So we've distinguished that um, given the, the, the two separate easements and different widths. Well, technically three oh. easements, oh, me. two of which are the 
the same width, 20 feet. Okay. Do you, uh, without, do you want to let them have some flexibility that these are minimums? Because that was kind of the concern, or? Well, they've shown these they've shown uh, in a re relatively precise manner on the plan, so we're right. simply accepting it as proposed. Perfect. Uh, and, and, and before it was 20, it was confusing because it was like 28 for both, which it wasn't in the drop. Yeah. <coughs> okay. That was the last one that I saw, yeah. yellow. And we didn't make any changes in any of the conditions, so I don't have to go to, to the end and make any changes. So. Other than the ones we've already covered, the conditions <clears throat> remain the same. And we so um, just to point out uh, a couple other pieces. So the hearings official's decision, um, the way this is crafted, will be attached and adopted by reference. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, uh, we we did pro we did provide the full list of conditions with modified or added conditions in the final order so it's an easy reference for anybody looking for Good. a complete um, uh, list and I think with that um, what this does is reflect the direction to um, to affirm with modifications um, so I'll leave it at that uh, do you want a motion now? yes definitely need a motion at this point so I move to affirm the planning, the hearings official. Well, should we accept the changes first? Well, I'm going to do it in my motion. Why can't we just adopt the final order as presented? Okay, whatever. I was going to yeah, that. Okay. <laughs> somebody, somebody want to. You, you can lead. How do you want it addressed? Commissioner Jaworski. Uh, I move that the Planning Commission adopt the final order of the Eugene Planning Commission on appeals of the hearing official tentative approval for Capitol Hill PUD PDT 17 1. Is there a second? Second. Okay, this is the last call for discussion on this. If there's anybody who has anything that they would like to discuss further, I'll only make a comment. I'm, I'm in favor of what's been drafted, but I really think a couple of additional conditions needed to be added. Uh, based upon uh, my interpretation that R1 zoning does not, it, there were some stipulations beyond that that weren't, that we didn't deal with with the conditions okay. above 901 feet. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Four to one. Thank you, for everybody. This was a heavy lift, but we got it done under the deadline by six hours. <laughs> Other business from oh. staff. I have something. Um, so you've gotten an email from Darren about that we received another appeal of a South Hills PUD. This will be fun because it's needed housing, so slightly different criteria. It will be a, a nice comparison for you. And um, there are less appeal issues, so I want to put that out there first. Um, we have the June 26th set for a hearing. You all have confirmed that you'll be there on the 26th. Um, we're holding some time on the June 25th meeting, which is one of your standing meetings, to provide you an overview, um, to give you some advance information, so you kind of to orient you to the site and to the appeal issues. Obviously, no deliberations that day. It's just so that you feel prepared going into the hearing. Um, as, I met, as the email mentions, the 120th day is July 7th, which produces a number of issues. Um, one, um, after June 30th, we will no longer have Jaworski, and I think it's too late to convince him to sign back up. Mm. So, and then we have the July 4th holiday, and then Steve is going to be out through the 2nd. And the applicant uh, wants to stick with the 120-day deadline. So right now we have one day where four of you are able to make it for deliberations. We will be checking with our new commissioners once we know who they are, um, their availability for deliberations as well, which means they'll have to watch the hearing and, and get up to speed and understand what on earth they're doing. Um, so I just wanted to let you know where we are with that, that we're well aware of the quorum 
and um, appreciate your flexibility and know that uh, this is tough on short notice for everyone. So um, yeah. if you have any questions, let me know. Or Am I still needed for a quorum on Tuesday? Well, you know, one question which we'll probably need to follow up on to make sure that you none of you need to recuse yourself from the hearing. So, so this is the FERDIC PUD. It's, um, I don't even know who the developer, I mean, Don Furtick, it's um, located spring and 30th. So I don't so know if any of you. Fairmount Neighborhood Association area. Yeah. Uh, Greg Daniels is the developer, I believe. Uh, okay. What is it, 14 lots? Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I don't know that you're needed, but it makes me nervous if you're not there and then somebody gets <coughs> whooping cough or something. Okay. Uh, so go, go over the time. You're thinking the, the well, public we, hearing on the 26th. Public hearing on the 26th. Which right, is a Tuesday. Which is a Tuesday. Okay. And then. And then we don't have we don't have a quorum the rest of that week. So deliberations would have to take place after Commissioner Jaworski is gone. After Commissioner Jaworski is gone. And then um, Commissioner Baker is out through the 2nd. Mm -hmm. So com that, which is Monday, actually. So we would. And. So deliberations would occur. There was one time on Tuesday, the third, that you were all available, um, and then we'll need to rely. If, if you're not able to do it in one meeting, we're going to have to rely on new commissioners to participate. So we're kind of a little bit in limbo right. until we have we know who the new commissioners are and their <clears throat> availability. Okay. You uh, said it's only a few. Yeah, I think there's four. four Four. I can't, yeah, there's four appeal issues. Okay. So it wouldn't, wouldn't be as much of a challenge as Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be the length of going through. It doesn't mean that they're not complicated, uh, as always, but at least it wouldn't be as many. I was just concerned because I'm gone that whole weekend, Friday through Sunday, as far as reviewing anything before Monday or Tuesday. The, the uh, which week? That uh, through July 1st. That weekend. Oh, okay. 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 And I'm not going to be reviewing plenty. Okay. Well, Mr. Baker. I was just wondering is it, since you already have the hearings official find, findings, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Is it possible to, even though it, it's before the hearing, is it possible to mail copies of that out or something in advance? Provide the for background. Yeah. I mean that way we Definitely. could send you that and the appeal, and the, the appeal yeah, issues. And the appeal. At yeah. least you'll have that, and then the staff analysis is. It's going to take us a couple of days since the That's appeal okay, came but in. At least that yesterday. way we're, we're aware of. The okay. Issue. That's great. I mean, and yeah, we're trying to figure yeah. out the best way to facilitate this, and I think as soon as we know who the new commissioners <coughs> are, we will. That will be the approach them and do a little training. The 25th, they'll be announced officially right that night and yeah so i would this is this is my take i would try i i would try and contact them um and then let them know that they're free to attend the public hearing and sit in the audience um because they're going to be seated commissioners come that the meeting under on deliberations so no matter what if they're if you know, they could say, I'm, I can't, I don't, I haven't watched it or I'm not okay. ready, but they're, they're going to be part of the quorum okay. on the, the yeah. third. They can also listen to it afterwards, yeah. but encouraging. Yeah. yeah I mean, they great. may want Informing to participate. Yeah, so, yeah. and I don't, I don't, it usually, I think it's unusual that we, we'd think that we could get through even a, you know, a less uh, long appeal in one day. So we'll probably have to schedule a second day mm -hmm. to do something like this. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And they will need to be, they will have to participate in that particular day. So and I guess on that evening of the public hearing, if we, the rest of us, know for sure that we are going to be there and that we'd have a quorum without Commissioner Jaworski, it would be nice to release him from yeah. attending. Agreed, agreed. So Text I think we can. Send him we have, if, we, if we know we'll have a quorum uh, without him, I mean, yeah, I support I that. So, yeah. no, I think we should have like a nice a crown that he can wear or something at that. I would have already read the material. It's going to be a surprise. <laughs> I know that's true. Well, yeah. Uh, just to confirm, Monday's here and Tuesday's at Harris Hall. Monday, yeah, the 25th will be here. It's a normal meeting. There's other agenda items. Um, <coughs> kind of 
tacking this on at the end, and then the 26th, we are confirmed at Harris Hall, okay, 6 o'clock. So, all right, so we'll, we will send the HO decision and the appeal <coughs> to all of you. And I guess kind of coming back to that, do the four of us know for sure that we're going to be there on the 26th? Because if we do, then it would save him reading all that, too. Agreed, unless there's somebody. I mean, it's such a, it's so tight. It always makes me nervous when yeah. there's just yeah. four. If I mean, knows. I'm coming back on a plane on the 25th, so uh, okay. it's a, yeah. you know, okay. assuming that there's yeah. Yeah. No, We'll bring you an additional trial. Well, what do you? I like? understand because they both ride bicycles, so I'm always nervous. About <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you guys will drive, just only between now and then. I think we'll it's actually fine. more dangerous to drive. <laughs> okay. Statistically. Yeah, okay. True. Okay. And then. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Commissioner Baker, I think if, if staff just because sometimes mailing takes a little longer, and to get to your point, if you guys can just send the file number, you know, all this information is on the city's website, so you can well, access it. We can, we can it. email it to you as yeah. well. I mean, yeah. we can That's email what you. I thought the, they would do is email yeah. it, so we wouldn't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I will, we will have the, the planner who's working on that email that, it. To these, you. these can't be that no, big. No, I understand. It's just that know that we don't have to wait for it yeah. to be brought to us sure. okay yep absolutely so I, we will we will send the HO decision and appeal issues to all of you via email today or tomorrow and then we'll work on asking the new planning commissioners to if they can attend the hearing or at least kind of get them prepared for their new role and yeah. we're jumping them yeah they get to jump right in so sorry one more okay because they're still uh, neighbors in the, in the audience uh, or in the audience way out there in the audience is what's the the timeline so in terms of we just made a decision what's the appeal period what's the remainder of the process yeah, and you're talking about for capital, for hill. capital, capital hill. hill just so that there there's information so just briefly there is a notice of decision required and that'll be mailed out to interest interested parties within five days of, of today's decision um, and from there, I believe it's a 21-day appeal period to the Land Use Board of Appeals. Yep. So this is the city's the city's final decision on this application. Um, uh, if a party wants to appeal the city's decision, that appeal would go to the Land Use Board of Appeals. Um, there are <coughs> Oregon administrative rules that are available online that do a great job of laying out the process for filing an appeal. Um, and the notice of decision will also include information about appeal deadlines and the statutory citations that folks can look at if they have questions about how to file an appeal. Okay. Thanks. Okay, any, any other thing from commission? We haven't really done commission and staff lately. Anybody have anything that they want to say? I think I would love to um, not use this as a planning commission meeting <laughs> since this was an emergency meeting. Yeah, I think that would be great. If we could end yeah. early, yeah. that would be Yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> All right. If you didn't get some coffee or a treat, please do that. With that, we are closed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all.